an aircraft is cruising at a constant velocity and we are interested in resolving the physics on this aircraft. The aircraft here is our object of interest. In fluid dynamics, we encounter engineering applications where the object of interest is translating through the fluid at a constant velocity. To resolve the flow physics, we solve the flow field by changing the frame of reference from the fluid to the moving object. In other words, we invert the problem and the object of interest becomes stationary. The fluid is now moving over the stationary object at a constant free stream velocity. However, there are specific scenarios where the objects moving are not undergoing pure translation at a constant velocity. There might be other scenarios where the object of interest is accelerating with respect to the fluid. A good example is rotating machinery such as turbines and compressors where the fluid is undergoing rotation. Another engineering scenario involves multiple bodies, each moving at different speeds. The motion of a drone is an excellent example. While the rotors of the drone are rotating about their respective axis, the drone itself can move in any direction. Under these conditions, the reference frame transformation is quite complicated and in certain cases it is next to impossible. In this lesson, we will learn about these classes of problems and some methods employed to solve them. There are two ways to solve such a problem. The first way is to solve the governing equations of fluid motion in the stationary reference frame of the fluid and include the motion of moving objects into the analysis. The second way is to recast the governing equations in a reference frame of the accelerating object. It is not always possible to recast governing equations in an accelerating frame of reference. In case of using a stationary frame, the regular generalized Navier-Stokes equations are used to define the motion of the fluid. Here, the no-slip boundary condition is applied to the solid fluid interface. Because the object of interest either accelerates or exhibits a complex motion, a transient formulation that is one varying in time is applied to these scenarios. The motion of the solid object is prescribed by a rigid body motion and includes both rotational and translational components. These equations have no analytical solutions and are solved using computational fluid dynamics. In the second approach, we change this reference frame from stationary to that of a moving object. This type of analysis is typically called Moving Reference Frame Analysis or MRF in short. The biggest advantage of this approach is that certain types of problems that are inherently transient in the stationary reference frame show steady behavior when the reference frame is changed to the moving object. For example, if the fluid velocity were measured at a point near the propeller of a plane, we would obtain an unsteady velocity profile. But when the same measurement point is now on the propeller blade, the fluid velocity becomes steady. Because steady problems are easier to solve and this approach does not require any rigid body motion of parts, it is less tedious compared to the previous approach. Although MRF analysis can be applied to both translational and rotational motions, rotational problems involving turbo machinery are most suitable candidates for this approach. When we model the accelerating objects, additional force terms such as gravitational force show up in the momentum equation of the Navier-Stokes formulation. 
these additional forces show up in even simple cases where reference frame is rotating at a constant angular velocity. The fluid feels like it is being pulled in different directions during its rotation. Imagine what you would feel when you are inside a roller coaster. Your body feels like it's pulled in different directions based on the movement of the roller coaster. When the roller coaster makes a sudden bite, your body feels like it is pulled in the left. This is similar to the acceleration forces that the fluid is experiencing as well. In MRF approach, the fluid velocity can be defined either as absolute or relative velocity. While the absolute velocity is defined with respect to the stationary or absolute frame of reference, the relative velocity is measured with respect to moving frame of reference. These two variables are related to the frame velocity using a simple velocity triangle rule for vector addition. In the MRF approach, the governing equations are first written out in the stationary frame of reference. The relationship between the stationary frame and moving frames is used to recast these equations into the moving frame of reference. Therefore, depending on the type of analysis, we have two different sets of governing equations, the relative velocity formulation and the absolute velocity formulation. The Navier-Stokes equations based on stationary frame of reference are transformed to a moving or rotating reference frame to obtain the relative velocity formulation. The equations for the absolute velocity formulation are obtained from the relative velocity formulation. The momentum equation in both formulations have additional Coriolis and centrifugal acceleration terms as well. Moreover, the force balance in the relative velocity formulation contains additional terms, the frame acceleration term. The equation for the relative velocity formulation has both rotational as well as translational accelerations. Even though these equations look different and contain different terms, they are equivalent and can obtain identical solutions when equivalent boundary conditions are applied to solve the flow problem. Additional scalar transport equations might be necessary for certain problems and have the same form in both formulations. MRF is most suitable for solving the flow field in rotating frame applications such as turbines, compressors, fans, propellers, and pumps. Pumps and turbines seem similar in their engineering construction, but are fundamentally different. Pumps are used to inject extra work into the fluid, thereby increasing its pressure. While turbines use the energy from the fluid for power generation. In addition, these modeling techniques can be employed to design mixing tanks where it is required to figure out how to efficiently mix either two or more fluids or a fluid and some solids. Other engineering applications where this type of rotating frame of reference analysis is critical are rotating cavities, disk drives, and electric motors for developing electric vehicles.